invite the local board up to the table. Welcome, Greg, and team. Is the whole team going to come up? Steve, Denise, Neil, Saffron, Sandra, welcome. Right. Thank you. Over to you, Greg. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you'll see, we're all here today, different places. We thought the issue was that important that we should all show up on on mass. So that's why we're here. Uh, prepared a um, PowerPoint. If I could just. Yes, we wish to talk to the agenda item about curry dieback. The first thing I'd like to do is to quote to you a, something that Peter DeLonghi said, and he's a scientist at Unitech, and he was previously a principal science advisor at uh, the Department of Conservation. And he was interviewed on Radio New Zealand this morning, uh, this week, and he said this, I can tell you now, because of the rate of decline that's been mapped, and because we have good data, that kauri is now being listed as a threatened species. And I think that's just terrible. This is an iconic tree, a sacred tree protected under the Treaty of Waitangi. Various iwi regarded as their totem tree, and we are potentially going to lose it. Mm. And in that very chilling statement, I think he summed up uh, entirely the problem that we've got to address today. If I could try and just very briefly summarise the threat that we're facing. Curry dieback is a curry killer. They're facing extinction. They're a keystone species. If they go, the health of the forest will be adversely affected. Waitaki Ranges is the most heavily affected area in the country. And it's clear from the work that the council has done that infection is concentrated along tracks, watercourses, and bait lines. This next slide is uh, taken from the um, curry dieback report. And I'm sorry, the, the, it's not ideal to look at on a slide, but when you, it, it maps uh, the closeness of infected trees to tracks, um, bait lines, and watercourses. And if you have a look at the left, um, on the left there's a real spike in terms of infections, and then it dies dramatically off the further away the tree is from one of those things. And I would suggest to you all that that particular graph is a very compelling argument in favour of the proposition that human beings in walking through the forest is a very strong vector in, in the spread of curry dieback. If I could address the options that you have in your paper, the first one, which is doing nothing, uh, we submit is not an option. The second one, status quo, is not an option. Uh, both of those options will fail. We believe that the recommended option, which is option three, is insufficient. We believe that there is an urgent need to quarantine areas where dieback is prevalent and to close tracks where, the, where there are healthy kauri. And we believe that option four is the closest to what is needed to protect kauri but still allow some use of the forest. And this final issue is something that we've spent a great deal of time talking about. We, although we respect the desire for full immediate closure of the ranges, we don't think that it's workable. And one further thing I should say is um, other speakers have spoken to you about use of the Biosecurity Act powers and having no-go areas. We think that that is imperative because if council is going to control um, the people using the forest, there needs to be teeth behind that power, and they need to have legal power to persuade people not to uh, not to go tramping. Can I just um, remind councillors about the Waitakere Ranges Heritage Area Act 2008, uh, which um, Penny and Linda and others were involved in the passing of, and that act puts a imperative on this council when thinking about issues that deal with the ranges to act in a protective way. Section 8 sets out the heritage area objectives, and they include protecting, restoring, and enhancing the area and its heritage features. And perhaps mostly important for today, Section 8C 
says that the Council should adopt the following approach when considering decisions that threaten serious or irreversible damage to a heritage feature. And one of those approaches is to endeavour to protect the heritage feature, and that's what we urge you to do today. This next slide shows on the left the map showing the spread of curry dieback. Um, the red dots, I'm sorry, they're not that visible, but the red dots show uh, identified infected curry in 2011, and the black shows infected curry at the, the most recent um, take. And I would suggest to you that that clearly shows that curry is spreading like a cancer. And when you look at the map on the right, which shows the tracks through the Waitaki Ranges um, area, it's spreading like a cancer, cancer along the walking tracks. Some specific areas. Oops. Just try and get the uh, pointer going. Um, right now I'm pointing to an area just outside of Piha, which looks rather dark and red. And then if you look next door to it, you'll see that there is a maze of tracks. <coughs> and the correlation between the disease and the tracks is quite startling. Uh, up north, there is another concentration of disease around the, uh, around the, uh, where the Waitakere Golf Course area is, the Cascades. And again, there's a meeting of, uh, there's another maze of tracks up there. Uh, down here is Whatapu, and there's another um, series of infections there, and uh, two more tracks. So when you look at the map, the disease and the tracks, is, the, the correlation is just so strong. The map on the right has four different um, categories of tracks. Um, you know, I apologize, it's not very visible, but the red is high risk, uh, yellow is low risk, uh, sorry, yellow is medium risk, orange is low risk, and green is safe. And you'll see many of the tracks are high risk. That doesn't mean necessarily that they have large amounts of curry dieback on them, but it means that because of water conditions, uh, presence of curry, uh, mud, that the risk of the disease spreading along those tracks is very high. And I understand that option four is that the red and the um, orange tracks should be closed, although perhaps the staff could confirm that. But when the report talks about high, medium, low, safe, I think this is the map that they're referring to. If I could just respond to Takara Wamaki, who have included us in the, the raising of their concerns and in, in their discussions today. Um, firstly, I can completely understand their desire and, to, and their motivation for imposing the Rahui on the ranges, and I can really feel the sense of frustration that they've experienced about how this issue's been handled so far. Just as an example, uh, the report concerning curry dieback uh, the results were available in November last year. We had urgent meetings in December last year to discuss the data, but it took until August of this year for the report to be published, and we need to deal with this, this issue quicker than that. The Rahui presents an opportunity to us. Um, we can urgently address the crisis, and it's also a wonderful educational tool for Auckland to tell Aucklanders about the severity of the situation and why action is required. And we consider that option four is not necessarily in inconsistent with the principles of the Rahui, because Takaro Amaki are prepared to allow rolling openings of low-risk areas, and we believe that perhaps the map that I showed you previously shows those low-risk areas, and perhaps to get things moving we can open those areas now, but concentrate on the more risky areas. There's been mention about how this is a potentially a treaty issue, and I wish to acknowledge that. Um, just to remind councillors that under Article 2 of the treaty, uh, the Crown agreed to protect um, all uh, Māori's treasures, 
and clearly Kari is one of those. We have a list of other matters that we believe should be done so that this issue can be raised and I'll deal with these quickly. Firstly, we, we believe that it should be urgent work on tracks to improve drainage and to increase the number of boardwalks as well as rerouting tracks away from Kauri. We believe that more hygiene stations should be installed along tracks and not just at track entrances. We believe the dock high quality stations are a good example of what should be used and that they sh should be imposed at key sites. Uh, we ask council to check station coverage. Uh, for instance, the beverage track which runs from Exhibition Drive to Arataki does not have any cleaning stations at all, yet it's regarded as a high risk um, track. We believe that um, maps and brochures, including online, sh with up-to-date information about Kauri PTA and closed tracks needs to be produced as an imperative. We believe that many Aucklanders will be receptive to and um, willing to comply with the requirements of the Rahui, but it's important that the information about the tracks that are closed should be, should be readily available. Uh, we believe non curry tracks on and off regional parks should be um, uh, promoted. We don't believe that there should be sporting events through the Waitakeris unless this, until this matter is dealt with. And in response to previous submissions that you've heard, we believe that work with concessionaires to recite tourism activities should be, should be happening. Uh, we would like to think that tourism cannot, will not be killed completely um, by, by the action that's required although we do think that the environment should take priority. Uh, other matters that should be done, uh, there needs to be work with AT to halt promotion of the Waitakeris until this is under control. Uh, we need to double the number of Kauri ambassadors in the Waitakeris. Last summer there were six of them and they were overworked. We need at least 12 and we need to give them longer periods of employment. We believe that we need to work with local communities to identify low-risk areas for exercise and recreation. They should be forming only in non curry locations. Uh, there needs to be a good visitor code of conduct for Waitakere. And we believe that dogs anywhere within the Waitakere ranges should be off leash. Not on leash. It's always a contentious one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blame the typist for that one. <laughs> oh, I read it wrong, did I? Okay. Okay, finally, this is a picture of Aunt Agatha, which I took on Saturday at the Rahui. And I'm very sad to say that Aunt Agatha, which is possibly the most prominent Kauri in Auckland, is dying. And we do not want to be here in another five years discussing another report that shows a further spread of this disease through the Waitakere Ranges. And we urge that urgent effective action is taken now. I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you, Greg, and thanks to the board for those excellent suggestions. Deputy Mayor and then Councillor Sayers. Thanks, Madam Chair. And thanks, uh, Greg and team, for the, for the work and for your advocacy here. Um, Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard you say that the complete closure of the park you didn't think was practical. Uh, could you give, give a bit of commentary around that, please? Uh, simple example, Exhibition Drive in Titarangi, which is used by huge numbers of people, would fall within the area. It's deemed to be a safe uh, walking track, and although I personally have the greatest of respect for the Rahui, I think we can jump quickly and say that a, a track like that can be left open. And there are also um, some of the tracks in the coastal areas where there are no kauri, and I don't see the risk of them remaining open rather than closing and then being reopened. Um, have you seen or heard of um, this disease actually not just affecting kauri but moving to other native species, as uh, mm. Jack Craw was talking about? Okay. Um, just to reiterate, the indication was that it'll jump to other species in those areas where there's very, very high concentrations of yeah. the zoo spores. So in areas where it's very low, where it's minimal, um, it would be, I would imagine, be very rare. And one of the trees that we're looking at is, um, I've forgotten the name of it now, Tanikaha, but there's Tanikaha. another one as well. It looks a bit like a macadamia. Yeah. A rewa rewa. Rewa rewa, um, which is a pretty awesome tree for us too. With all those medium leaf species, mm. Tanikaha would be part of it too. Madam Chair, last question. 
You spoke about sporting events not being allowed to occur at all within the ranges. What about whether it's under strict conditions of everyone has their shoes washed or whatever? Do you see any methodology? I know how popular some of those um, sporting events are. Sandra spent a lot of time yeah, on that issue. I've <coughs> personally gone and um, watched the Hillary Trail run, and they're very impressive in the way that they coach people about how and the number of um, triging stations that they have, which people have to run through. So. On the race day, things are well controlled, although, as you heard from your earlier people, we really don't know how much trigene stations are halting the spread of the disease. But the issue is it's a highly competitive um, race, and it has encouraged, I think, large numbers of people to they train through the, through the tracks and, and just encouraging the sport of trail running through the park, which has grown immensely in probably the last six or seven years. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sayers. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> um, just two questions, both related to each other. Um, thank, nice to see you in the board long, obviously, and thank you for your input. So if I've heard you correctly, you're saying you're, as a board, you're united in favouring option four with some other things that you've, you've mentioned. You've just mentioned some other resources and initiatives that you'd like to see occur in that. Uh, so if, we, if, if councillors are to consider option four, are there, are there any amendments required to that, or do you think that's incorporated um, in, in the wording that's around the report? So that's my first question, Greg. The one amendment I'd like to see is um, scoping and work done on the Biosecurity Act notice proposal, because op option four is fine by itself, but if you can't enforce track closures, then you know we're still going to be facing a crisis. Okay. Can I just add something, and that says nobody's mentioned the word budget, but you actually can't do all the things that need to be done without putting some budget to this, and and either bringing some money forward. Um, or finding the budget from somewhere else. And I would see that as part of the scoping exercise is the need for officers to report back on the budget needed to implement um, closure of tracks in, in a way that is enforceable and is articulate to the public uh, and all the other things that we're recommending. It's not going to be possible to do it on the existing budget um, so I think it's really critical that that information, if councillors go in that direction, they ask for that information to come back. Uh, and that, uh, that was my second question, actually, <laughs> in terms of uh, just trying to, trying to understand, the councillors understand where, what is the budget at the moment and what is required. I think perhaps you've answered that. Other than what is, if you can confirm perhaps what the existing budget is, what money is there? I think we need that. That's for the item itself, okay. I think right. Councillor right. Sayers. Right. The board, with the, I, I think we're probably going to go into, um, into more detail, that in some depth, but just in acknowledging the board who have mm. put their own LDI money into this and have actually employed Christine Rose as the advocate and educator around Kauri, I think the board have been exemplary in the way they've dealt with this. So we will go into that during the item. Saffron. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd just add to that, I mean, yes, the budget obviously has not been ad adequate to date and the program has not served our Kauri or the many, many species that depend on them for their survival. Um, so budget is a really, really important one. But I would also... Um, add to the recommendation to include a, a directive to assess the track risk criteria with utmost seriousness and urgency because um, what has been also clear is that through the report it hasn't been quite clear what that criteria is or even the maps that we're referring to when we look at what is a, what is a high risk track and what's a moderate risk track. Mm -hmm. I would say that infected tracks should be impassable and that also we need a two-pronged approach. We really need to protect those pristine areas. They need to be absolutely protected and quarantined. Um, concessionaries, and we've heard a lot of very, very um, compelling arguments from people who work in the ranges and obviously are doing a very good job of, of spreading some very good practices and educating the public in a way that... Um, so there's no other kind of education like that out there. But it would also be a bit of a perverse outcome if we ended up with a situation where the only users of the forest would be those that are paying. So I just want to, to keep that really clear too. Um, 
although that might be a stopgap for a little while, I'm not sure. Um, and the sheer numbers of people is one of the reasons that having a com full and complete rahui does seem to be um, very, very difficult to implement in terms of the, the lots and lots of numbers of track entrances or entrances to the park, but also the huge and varied world views that we have within our community. And one of the um, concerns that I have is that those that will um, respect the rahui or respect the track closures um, are those that are going to um, obey, you know, and sort of do the right thing anyway. So we need to have a realistic approach that's going to um, effectively communicate to the public and empower our communities to work to be part of the solution. Thank you. We've so got the next question from, actually, Steve, I'll, I'll get Cathy to ask her question. I'm sure we can weave it in. We really, I am now very aware that we may not finish this meeting this afternoon. We, we need time to actually get to this item. I've got Councillor Casey, Councillor Cooper, Member Blair, and then we are going to move on to the oh, item. I'm good, you Councillor Casey. Oh, I'm good. You're, You're good? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Cooper. Sorry, it was just... Thank you, and thanks for putting this together, because I know it took a while for, as a board to kind of come to a, an agreed solution, and I know that you are a board that does want to get to consensus, so I, I really appreciate the work you've done to get to this point. Um, just in terms of option four around the 100, approximately 100 approved commercial concessions, so are you, you know, for you, that means that will be a big change for them, and you're comfortable with that? Um, yeah, I, was, I was going to raise that. I, this, yeah. this local board is certainly not anti-business or anti-concessionaire. Uh, we are really seeing the importance of seeing the forest restored and, and seeing it's protected for future generations as an asset, as a tourism asset as well. And so it's very important. I think concessionaires and businesses actually have a role to play in this through education, through compliance, and through being champions um, to the public about the need to protect the Kauri and the uh, enormity of the crisis that we face. So I think that there is, um, they certainly are not left out of this equation, but the, um, the if, if I can use a commercial term, sorry, but if the asset isn't protected, there will not be a tourism industry. Yeah, so I'm just not clear what your answer was because I just, so I'm, I'm just not sure whether it's, okay, commercial concessions are gone or they have to modify what they're doing. Or They'll have to I just want to know yeah. what you're I understand is. it to be modified what they're doing and they will also be restricted from the same tracks. There will not be a situation, like as Saffron was alluding to, where there will be haves and have-nots. Oh, Some people are using yeah. the track and others not. The, the um, restriction will... Um, relate to, to, to all comers, whether the public or whether concessions. Okay, can I give yeah. you an example? Oh. Um, Tony Dunn's mentioned to me that there's one track in Karakari which, yeah. if a, half of it was open, uh, it's manageable for them, and he believes the half is environmentally, uh, environmentally safe, yeah. but the other half isn't. So yeah. it's Thank the sort of conversation that. that needs to happen. Can I just mention one thing, though, that I think um, we should have said on-track activity for concessionaires, mm. because there are in the ranges off-track activities, and I'm referring to the canyoners, that have been allowed to use the watercourses at Cowan Stream and Kitty Falls for the last 17 years, and... Uh, it's hard to see how that, in terms of the passage of Kauri dieback, how that can be a safe activity. And just to quickly, sorry, um, in terms of our wonderful Ark in the Park who have a bait line, um, and we know that along the bait lines, and I know they feel very sad about this, so there's huge, it shows quite a lot of infection. Um, is this, and I, I heard, well, before when Miles Barton was talking, saying, oh, that's consented, et cetera, et cetera. But how, have you got any um, thoughts on how do we minimise that? We need to do the baiting, we need to, to do the pest control. Is there any con um, thoughts around how we do that better without lots of tramping in and out? Maybe technology? Um, 
Because that is a big issue. Best, best I, well, I, I think with a lot of these things, it's sit down with the people and mm. work on it together. Mm. You know, I'm sure there can be improvements made by anybody that's doing pest control in the Waitakere Ranges, and we've got to do all those things. So um, we don't want to stop the activity <coughs> that's actually stopping pest plants, stopping mm. pest animals, mm. but we have to look at every possible thing to do to make it as safe. Right, thank you. Thank you, that's helpful. Right, last question, comment to really? um, Member Renata. Kia ora to your board, Greg. Um, you just touched on um, the, bio, the control area under the Biosecurity Act, and I think that's quite critical towards the conversation Absolutely. and the options. Because the, that <coughs> con controlled area and access to the Waitakere would mean that approved users would and, con and control measures would be put in place in order for ac for people to access the Waitakere. Is that correct? Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll take that answer. Um, I think that's correct, and that would provide a statutory legal sort of warrant situation, I mean, where people could be able to be inspected, and they would have to provide some sort of background justification around the activities, things like that. Um, I think that that could be put in place my understanding is that it could be put in place tomorrow so and, or, and that's scoped out very quickly. It's, it's the kind of thing that MPI does just like that and we have the capacity to do that. So the council should consider that as part of the uh, decision regarding the options? Absolutely, I think um, for all of the options that are currently realistically on the table it, that has to be done. And thank you for those uh, recommendations and the actions because they seem very quite logical, but without budget, which we need yeah. to consider um, to apply to it, it, it would be hopeless. Okay, so echoing that, thanks for some of the really practical suggestions and the huge amount of thought and energy that's gone into yeah. this issue. I want to thank the board, and um, I think Councillor Cooper would like to move, and I'll second that we thank uh, warmly our uh, Waitangi Rangers local board for their input on to in this issue. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carried. Thank you, board. Thank you. And we'll just move straight into the item. So I'd just like to invite our staff to come forward and put a presentation. And sitting here and looking through Kauri as we listen to this presentation seems very appropriate. I do worry, however, that we may need to take these three fragile Kauri out of this room afterwards and give them a bit of love and aroha having spent time in this stressful place. So um, over to our staff. Mace, are you starting this off or Rachel? Or I'll Phil? start off, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Mace. Ahiahi uh, Marie, uh, Madam Chair, Mayor Phil and uh, 